Mitchell with a wide open to the pylon and a touchdown. Ehlers, quarterback run, touchdown, ECU. Here's Ehlers looking, throwing, the fake, C.J. Johnson. Protective Stadium in downtown Birmingham, Alabama, the home to UAB football hosts the 2022 Ticket Smarter Birmingham Bowl between East Carolina and Coastal Carolina meeting for the very first time. Hello and welcome inside the American Studios along college football analysts Rini Angolia and Taylor McCarg. I'm Morgan Uber. For East Carolina, after back-to-back -back years, guys, seven and five seasons, but their first bowl opportunity because of last year's being canceled. Rini, how big is this opportunity that the Pirates have here in front of them? Huge. I mean, you felt so bad for those players last year. They're all set to go play in a bowl game. Obviously, COVID issues, they don't get to play it. And, and so for them to bounce back this year again and get after it and get seven wins and, and get back to a bowl game, um, you feel happy for them and this Mike Houston coach team. Their first bull win, it would be their first since 2013. Taylor, what would that mean to this program? But so much, and especially for a program that before Mike Houston got there, there were multiple three and nine, four and eight seasons. They've come a long way in the past few years. And Holton Aylers, he's been there forever. We'll talk a lot about him. But for him to go out with one more win, a bowl victory, I think it would mean a lot not only to this senior class, but to Mike Houston as well. A Greenville native who has come back and been here for what feels like an absolute eternity. But for East Carolina, how they got here this season, it was a much improved team than we've seen here in the past few seasons after what they did in week one, coming up just with a one point loss to then number 13 NC State. We go into November and the Pirates, they were still technically in the hunt to play for a conference championship game because of their big 34-13 win over UCF. But then they dropped their next two conference games to Cincinnati and Houston. As for Coastal Carolina, they started 6-0 before falling to Old Dominion in conference play. The Shade Declares responded though with three straight wins to make their conference championship, losing to Troy 45-26. And their head coach for the last six seasons, Jamie Chadwell, has since taken the reins at Liberty. And it's Tim Beck, the NC State offensive coordinator, becoming the new head coach. And when we look at their head-to-head -head stats here, uh, both these teams, they put up almost the same points per game. A 7-5 and five season, as we mentioned, for the Pirates. 9-3 and three for Coastal. Total offense, uh, East Carolina there has the edge, 459 yards. Total defense pretty evenly matched, and the Pirates have the edge here in this scoring margin. But, Rini, when you look at this matchup, why is it a favorable one for the Pirates? Well, you mentioned the, the first one, I think is the biggest one, Jamie Chadwell, his, his left uh coast carolina going to liberty so we talked about this before when a coach leaves there's a, a lot of upheaval that happens assistant coaches are they staying are they going elsewhere are they going to liberty are they thinking about where they're going to live where their kids are going to go to school so there's a ton going on so right off the bat i give the advantage to ecu um, Coastal Carolina, although it's a nine-win team, Taylor, not the not the nine-win team I think that we've seen of Coastal teams in the past. Grayson McCall is good. He's been banged up. But that defense has given up a lot of points this year. Well, and it's a Coastal team that limped to the finish line. Yep. They had losses to JMU. They had losses late in the year that you would have expected them at the beginning of the year to win. A lot of that had to do with Grayson McCall being hurt. They also had a game canceled with the tragedy with Virginia. They didn't get a chance to play yes. that game. So a lot going on in the back half of the schedule for Coastal Carolina. I think what's also key for East Carolina is most of their, almost all of their key players are playing and have opted into this game, which obviously benefits the Pirates. This is a really special senior and super senior class for East Carolina that have completely changed the culture of this program. You think about when they came in one in seven back to back years yeah. in conference play and what they've been able to do these last two years and now being able to play in a bowl game this team definitely going to have an edge and one of those reasons is because of their senior quarterback Holt Nailers uh, Greenville native who it, it means a lot to him to put on that pirate uniform Taylor what is the legacy that Ailers will leave here for the Pirates I think Holt Nailers is as important as any player that's ever come through East Carolina and it is off the field as well he's from Greenville like you mentioned his dad the PA announcer at the stadium for East Carolina. So there's so much. It goes beyond just all the records, but the records are important. He's got over 15,000 yards of total offense. He's rewritten the record book there. 
and you, we had a couple of their games this season, and you could just feel how much that program and that town loves him, and he will be missed there. We talk about how important it would be, especially for his legacy, if they can go out with one more win in a bowl game. How about 15,000 total yards? I couldn't even run that far right now <laughs> without falling over. And you talked about it. The fan base is starving for a bowl win, and it's a great fan base. I love going to Greenville. It's one of my favorite places to go. Great stadium. Um, he played hurt a lot this year, yeah. almost the entire year. I mean, he's a, there's no regard for his body. He throws his body in there. He just wills his team to get wins. And I think, you know, to go out with a bowl win would be really special for him and this program. Five different American records, nine different records at East Carolina, two single game records and seven different single season records. It really is impressive what he's been able to do commanding this offense and he's had a lot of great weapons around him as well keaton mitchell who comes in we saw him really have a breakout season last year led the conference in rushing yards per game and yards per carry and he follows that up topping the charts again Rini, in both of those categories as a former running back what is it that stands out about mitchell's game well first of all when rashi harris got hurt then it became the keaton mitchell show and i think as a tailback you you, you know you love to have you know a, a partner with you to do it but you also want the carries too. And so once it became his show, um, he's the type of back, again, all great backs have it, vision and patience. You see how he presses the hole and then he uses his eyes, he bounces it, and then he gets in the open field. He's got great speed as well. And the other thing he does really well, catches the ball in the backfield. And one of the things he's underrated at, he, he's really good in pass pro too. He'll step up and block a linebacker blitzing. So he can do it all. And he's the type of guy, again, 25 28 carries a game well and all you have to know about his importance to this program is look at two of the losses this season when he went down yes. navy at home and then cincinnati on the road that team was a totally different team in offense when he went down and mike houston talked about it in our calls with him especially that cincinnati game he felt like we're going to win that game if mitchell stays in for the entire game he goes out misses most of the second half and they end up losing close in that game their run game is really impressive, but also when you look at their defense, it's been their rushing defense that has really held them and kept them in games, and that's a big reason why they were able to take down UCF and the dual threat, John Rice Plumley, their quarterback there for the Knights. What is it, how they've been so consistent, Rini, and been able to be uh, you know, so stout against so the run? So defense is interesting with them here as we get to this bowl game, and I think Taylor's going to agree with me here. Now, Blake Harrell, the defensive coordinator, very aggressive. Early on, they were healthy, everyone was playing, very aggressive. They got to the quarterback, moved him off his spot. They were able to get to the run gaps. They, they attacked. I think as the season progressed, they got beat up. They were kind of just kind of holding on, trying to keep stuff in front of them. And so, you know, you look at the last two games of the season, if my math's right, 42, 46, 48 points they gave up in those last two games, which was uncharacteristic of that defense, but again, they were a little beat up. I think this defense is going to benefit tremendously from having three weeks off from the end of the season to this bowl game. Holding on, as you said, that's exactly how it felt. I had them for their last two weeks of the season. Houston at home on senior day, and then the next week on the road at Temple. And the 42-3 to loss at home, Mike Houston talked about, it was a letdown spot after they lost to Cincinnati. And his team, that was that game, losing that game to Cincinnati, took them out for the opportunity to compete for the American Conference Championship. And that defense so banged up, talk about how they want to be aggressive, they couldn't do that for those last two weeks. And E.J. Warner, even in a win for East Carolina, E.J. Warner from Temple picked them apart. So the challenge on the other side now, Coastal presents a totally different look on the offensive side. They run the triple option yeah. out of the shotgun. And it's a look that East Carolina has not seen this season. Really, that's going to come down to, is Grayson McCall healthy? Because that's an NFL quarterback on the other side. He's going to get a look in the NFL. He'll be drafted. If he's ready to go, it's a very different look that East Carolina is going to be seeing. Okay, so going deeper into that, when you look at this game, what's your single biggest key in this matchup, Taylor? You have to slow down Grayson McCall if he's healthy because that is one of the most dynamic players in college football. That last stretch of the season that we talked about where East Carolina struggled, or excuse me, where Coastal Carolina struggled, that really had to do with Grayson McCall being out and injured. He came back for the last game of the season in the conference championship against Troy, but was still banged up. If he can go and he can run, this is a totally different offense for Coastal, and that's going to be a real challenge for East Carolina. And I agree. So defensively for ECU, you got to play disciplined football, right, with that triple option out of the gun. And he'll pop back and he'll throw it vertical as well, which makes it so tough to defend. But I think the overall key to this game is win the line of scrimmage. Mm -hmm. I think if you win the line of scrimmage, you're going to win this game. And so for ECU, if you get that running game going, Keaton Mitchell, you get them going downhill, you get them on the, the, the stretch play. If you can do that, then it's going to open up throwing lanes as well, and, and I think ECU can have a big day. 
Quarterback Holt Nailers has waited a lifetime to play in a bowl game. And guys, when I take a look here and make my pick for the game, I've got the Pirates. I think what they've shown this season, they had that awesome walk-off win at BYU that, you know, we didn't even talk about it. They beat the teams that they were really supposed to here this season, and I think they have a great shot to finish this season on a high note. Rudy, who do you got? Mike Houston's an excellent coach. Uh, we talked about them kind of limping to the end here. Get this rest. Um, he'll have them disciplined, ready to play. Jamie Chadwell no longer the, the coach at Coastal Carolina. That goes against them. Uh, I think ECU wins this game. It's a program that has a lot of pride, and you talked about the ups and downs in this season. Wins over Navy, or excuse me, losses to Navy, but they had a win against UCF, win against a couple other big teams during this regular season. And the ups and downs, I think they have gotten past those two the last part of the season, getting healthy. I like ECU to win this game. Well, we will all be tuned in Tuesday, December 27th for the very first time to see East Carolina and Coastal Carolina meet on the gridiron. That one at 6.45 p.m. Eastern on ESPN.